Welcome, welcome to Double Crown's uh, sub-series within GTA. I'm going to be doing, uh, well, this session anyway, is driving lessons in GTA. And I'm going to show you why GTA is designed, the city layout, etc., is designed to cause maximum damage, maximum confusion, and the maximum number of accidents. Um, Although they have got some nice features as well, which kind of encourages driving and driving at speed as well. So it's not all about damage, actually. Um, so I'm just parked up here. And of course, these are based on American roads and I'm kind of used to UK driving. Uh, so this is going to be quite an unusual uh, episode because uh, I don't know what the American road system is. So I'm kind of guessing here. Um, right, the first thing is, um, we're going to drive up here onto this uh, this island here, this curb, and you'll notice there's no bollards or anything to stop anybody, um, to stop a vehicle, to stop a car. There's nothing to stop you mounting this this curb and just driving right over the top at full speed. So this is quite a nice feature in a, in a way that they're kind of designed. How you doing? Uh, we just uh, we just ignore that call for the time being. Um, yeah, so there's nothing to stop uh, you just mounting this curb and driving at full pelt. So let's let's go down here. Now you'll notice these yellow markings here. I presume these these yellow markings are designed uh, to stop the two opposing streams of traffic. But you'll notice there's an arrow here. So this would suggest you know, that we should be facing this way. And of course, it's asking you to turn left if we were facing this way. Now, but if we if we drive back and continue uh, in, that, in the very same lane, all of a sudden we notice there's a car there and there's an arrow which suggests we should be facing the other way. Um, so again, this lane here is just designed to cause accidents, isn't it? Cause maximum confusion. And nobody knows which way round you should be driving in that lane. Um, and really it's designed, you know, the yellow markings would suggest that you should be, uh, um, you shouldn't be in there at all. Um, so that's interesting. Anyway, let's let's move on. And uh, the next thing we're going to talk about is this junction here, which is interesting in itself. It looks like there's some sort of zebra crossing, but you'll notice how many lanes there are: one, two, three, four, four lanes of traffic, all facing, all pushing forward or turning left or whatever. And if anybody actually wanted to turn into this road, they've only got one lane. You've only got this single lane here to actually turn into this road. Uh, so again, you know, designed to cause maximum confusion. Now what if we were to go into this box junction here, this... Uh, we look at the road markings there. Well, it's not very clear, you know, exactly where we're supposed to be headed, where we're supposed to be turning, etc. I mean, for example, if we were facing this way and uh, we wanted to turn left, there's nothing to guide us into the correct lane there, into the correct lane to get into. I presume it's this one. Yeah. But no real guide there. So we've got a nice little feature here, um, again we've got this uh, double yellow line uh, markings here in the middle of the road separating two streams of traffic and you've got this um, basically um, this little area here which causes total confusion because you don't know where you're supposed to be. Um, you can, you know, you end up on this side of the road and if we're driving this way, you know, here it's telling us to turn left. 
So that that basically, there's absolutely no need for this kind of road marking here, is there? It do, just doesn't serve for any purpose. You could just you could just have this single uh, set of yellow lines. This 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 set here that we've got. Uh, going all the way down and following this kind of path there um, that's all you need so that set of markings is totally unnecessary okay so we are at this junction here and as you can see what appears to be some sort of uh, crosswalk there um, I'm guessing that's for uh, pedestrians to cross and there's somebody approaching and no, they're not, they're not actually going to cross the road. But, um, okay, this is uh, basically you can go straight ahead or you can turn left here. Now, if we go into the uh, the central area, now you just look at the markings here. I mean, we've got a yellow line, we've got white lines, and, I mean, it's just total confusion there. And you'll notice there's three lanes of traffic going one way, but if we were actually going to turn left here, we've only got one lane for us to actually get into again designed to cause maximum confusion now this is an interesting feature here we as you can see the road here changes color and this color here actually matches the uh, pavement so if you're driving at full pelt at fast pace along this road and we move forward you don't know if that's the pavement or if it's the road and actually it's the road there um interesting okay so what happens if you knock a set of traffic lights over so that's what we're going to do now we're going to knock this set of traffic lights over i think it's pretty straightforward to do you can just ram into them like that and there you go the lights are down um, and um, and you can see I've, the actual lamppost is gone all of a sudden all I did was look away and the lamppost is gone now how is that going to respawn so basically we're just going to drive forward a bit um, let's just drive up to this crosswalk not very far at all and we're going to drive back and let's see if it's respawned no it hasn't it hasn't respawned that was pretty short now we better remember where we are uh, we're just next to uh, a couple of benches there which says your ad here so we're going to drive a bit further and see just how far we have to drive before that lamppost respawns so we were at this junction this time we're at the, the second junction here and now we're going to go back and we're going to see if that lamppost has respawned uh, that's it and there we go we're back to your ad here and you'll see the traffic lights have respawned now it's interesting we mentioned that we can knock down these lampposts so for example if I was to move forward we can knock this lamppost down but if I was to hit this this is a telegraph pole it will not go down and this will stop the car and you cannot proceed um, interesting okay so this is an interesting feature here uh, we're on this road here and as you can see there's kind of a, a hill just up ahead so we're approaching this brow of a hill and we're let's say we were to approach this at speed yeah we get, well we've stopped but we're gonna we're going to go on and just imagine you, we were going at a full pelt and we're going at full pelt and you'll notice the lane markings are again confused um, we've got a line here which suggests we're in lane but when we go you see we've got all this room here that we could have used which is kind of denied and of course on this brow of a hill you, you don't see uh, what's in front of you now if you look up ahead you can see something kind of black um, and we're getting pushed forward by this guy um, 
you'll notice that there's something black up ahead, but it's not clear what that black thing is. We're staying in lane, and all of a sudden, we've got a mark in here which tells us to turn left. But of course, if we were going at full speed, we would ignore that, and we'd just drive straight on, and you'd end up, and look, I mean, that's, that's like an optical illusion, this. You don't know what that is, and of course, it's a barrier, and you just hit that. And that's what would happen. And of course, there was a, uh, this barrier comes just at the brow of a hill, just after the brow of a hill. Shithead. Now, it's interesting if we were to go down here, uh, and we're going to follow uh, uh, this barrier here, and we're going to try and get these, past these cars. And we're just driving along. And it's not long before we come across a, a stream of traffic. And we're going to get closer and closer to this barrier in order to get past the traffic. And you notice we hit this, uh, this barrier here. It's got this nice, nasty, sharp edge there uh, designed to be hit if you try and get past the traffic. Okay, so we are here by this airport here and we've been filed into this uh, single lane uh, um, road here. And of course, once we're on a single lane road, we end up stuck in a traffic queue here. <laughs> Uh, with very little room to get around the edge there. And once we do attempt to get around the edge, and we go through the middle, uh, through this gap here, we follow the road round, and get past all the traffic there. We follow it round, and before you know it, we end up hitting this barrier here. Great. Okay, so people often talk about draw distances and what do they actually mean by draw distances? Now, if we look down there, uh, we can see the base and we can only make out so much detail with our naked eye. Um, and if you look, um, there's only so many things that you can actually see. Now, if we look out this gun again, you know, this is like looking out the naked eye, we can only see so much. But if we were to zoom in, now, you, they, there we go. You can see some, some features, uh, now I'm pointing, if you look at the white dot there, you'll see a little feature there that just suddenly appears when you zoom in a bit. Here, it's not visible at all, it's gone. And you zoom in and you can actually see that the, the feature is actually drawn in at that point. Um, so this is pretty much like driving, isn't it? Now, if we were driving at fast pace, we'd be driving and we'd be approaching. And then all of a sudden we'd see something. Um, we'd see an object that wasn't there before. Designed to cause crashes. Okay, we're on a fast dual carriageway here, and we're going to try and pick up some speed. And again, you see, we've got these double yellow lines, so we can use this lane, and we'd end up hitting that post if we were to do that. Um, so it's kind of tempting uh, to go in. We can knock these down. Driving down the middle again. And again, it splits into two lanes. causing confusion. So we're driving pretty quickly now. And well, we seem to have avoided most of the, uh, most of the accidents. Now there you go, there's a classic example there. Um, 
you try and drive down the middle and somebody ends up turning uh, a corner and you end up smacking into them. Okay, so as you can see, I'm parked up and I'm causing a traffic jam. And uh, we're actually going to see uh, how much the traffic builds up. Now, if we look at the vehicles, this truck is trying to get through one or two. Well, we, we'll try and um, create a complete block with these three trucks. Now, there's somebody who's come out, yeah. They've left their vehicle, which is perfect. It means that basically nobody can get through, which is ideal. Now, if we look at the traffic, actually the traffic's not building up that much. You can see there's one, two, three trucks I can count there. And one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, and maybe eight cars, seven or eight cars there. So if we were to leave the vehicle and just, uh, I mean, nobody's in this van, this uh, truck, which is perfect. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cars, nine, ten cars, eleven. 12, 13, 40, and they're still building up. Now, if we were to rush back, and you can see that they've managed to, um, basically there was a truck there with no driver, but obviously that driver has spawned again. Okay, hope you enjoyed uh, those driving tips, driving in GTA, and of course you should remember uh, these uh, driving tips do not apply on real roads. This is just for GTA. Thanks for watching, and uh, see you again soon. Bye for now.